Welcome back to The Talking Hedge. I'm Josh Kincaid, and this is your Cannabis Business Podcast. Today, we're going to do a brief analysis on the vape pen market. On the line with us is Dan Kemis, our CBD correspondent with Good CBD Products. I feel like I've been here before. Yeah, this is a fast moving, um, you know, a deal where Washington just had a governor, uh, our Governor Inslee put uh, an executive order banning all flavored vapes. And so that's drawn a lot of criticism and, and lobbyist groups and everyone is trying to address that before uh, it gets signed. But this headset report that just came out talks about the vape pen market share and the business side behind it. So in June 2019, before the vape pen crisis, uh, this article goes on to say, quote, uh, vape pens represented between 15 and 30 percent of the total adults use cannabis sales with California markets showing the largest market share of vape pens at 31 percent compared to Washington at 19. So vape pen growth pattern has all states with an increase in vape pen market share from January to June. Category had stronger growth with more traditional inhalable products such as flower pre-rolls during this period. In California, it was 31% in June versus 29%. So there's been some recent market share changes. So as shown below in this graph, the vape pen market share significantly decreased in all states starting in the last week of August when the first vape pen illness cases were reported then stabilizing California, Nevada, then Washington during the latter half of September. Reports have been stated that most deaths were linked to illicitly obtained products. In fact, moving forward, we could see vape pen sales increase if consumers in adult use states move their purchasing from the black market into the licensed dispensaries where they can be confident they will be able to purchase fully regulated and tested products. Yeah, you know, out on the ground yesterday, common question was, okay, you know, how is the vape pen situation impacting your business? And my gosh, you know, five for five, five stores visited, right? Um, five different, uh, anywhere from heavy to massive, right? And then, uh, you know, everybody having their kind of rapid response answers in place, right? They're, they've already got their flyers in hand that, that show that, no, no, we do third-party testing, we this, we that. But at the same time, you know, again, a crisis that is roiling in an industry, truly. So this article from Headset goes on to ask what's next. Undoubtedly, as the vape pen illness story continues to unfold, government agencies expand their investigation, public perception could have a deeper impact on the category. At Headset, they remain watchful of upcoming regulatory changes like the proposed ban on flavored vaping products in Washington State, which could have a significant impact on sales. Furthermore, they find that while top-line sales of adult-use cannabis have declined significantly week over week, some categories continue to show growth. This could be to consumers branching out and trying new product types in the wake of the negative media attention on vaping products. Particularly in Washington, they see that pre-rolls are up 8%, and in California, edibles are up 9% in recent weeks. So you have to stay tuned for more data and analysis in the coming weeks. There's another article about uh, defying the early expectations. There's wholesale cannabis flower markets remain unaffected as vaping health crisis continues. That's one uh, article from the, the marijuana, or, yeah, marijuana Business Daily. Massachusetts, they're thinking about a ban on all vaping products becoming the first state to target marijuana and tobacco. So, you know, Washington just has flavored, whatever flavor means, terpenes or, or additives. That's what we're trying to negotiate versus Massachusetts just saying, hey, there's a ban on all vaping products. And I think California is going to put a ban on vaping, tobacco or otherwise as well. So a lot of backlash. Oh, you know, there's that uh, San Francisco has a ban going on right now. So again, um, if it turns into dominoes falling, then it really does become a crisis for, for an industry, right? Because again, um, you know, when, when whole jurisdictions, when whole states start turning you off, wow, does that impact sales? Wow. Yeah, Los Angeles County is putting a year-long ban on all cannabis vaping sales. That's crazy. So we saw Oregon try to do the same thing with solvents, and it affected the market for months until they were able to overturn that. Rosin makers did phenomenally well. This is going to be huge, man. I, we talked about bankruptcies and how it was going to affect the market. If you were only a, an oil company and you put in hundreds of thousands of dollars for an extraction machine, the facilities, licenses, and you didn't touch the flour, you have no product. That's terrible. Right, right. You literally, and 
in a lot of ways on a turn of a dime, right? That's, that's the other part of it is, again, you know, forecasting. And, you know, if you weren't spot on it, I mean, your August forecasting for this coming, you know, for fall and all of that, um, again, those numbers, you know, that kind of dip, that kind of change, if you didn't have a war chest sitting aside, you're done. Right. So right now, what people are trying to do is look at vape manufacturers, their product, their packaging, and trying to distinguish it from the counterfeit merchandising. Uh, so the dank vapes and whatever else, I guess people are trying to to distinguish themselves differently. Uh, so that's uh, one way of doing it. Um, there is an interesting chart about recreational cannabis sales by week. It looks like vape sales might be rebounding in some key markets. This was uh, put out just a couple of days ago. Chart of the week from MJ Business Daily um, that maybe people are coming into the regulated market instead of black market. I'm, I, I'm, not, I'm just inferring what, based on what I've read and seen. Basically. Yeah, well, you know, we're only as good as the data, right? Exactly. But this, uh, this article goes on to say, quote, after several weeks of declines, vape shares of adult use cannabis sales in California, Nevada, Washington are beginning to slowly tick back up, according to Headset, Seattle-based provider of data and analytics. And CDC is reporting the majority of patients sickened in the vape epidemic use may come from the illicit market. So again, we're kind of just seeing maybe an influx of folks coming into the regulated market from wherever else they were going to. I wouldn't want to be on the, on the end of that, though. There's a FDA uh, disclosing a criminal probe into that health crisis. So a lot of scrutiny on the cannabis industry. You're going to put some roadblocks, some heavy regulation, barriers to entry. It's going to be a lot more expensive. You have to have a lot more compliance, which requires more human capital. Uh, it's going to affect the industry drastically. Uh, the old days of the homie with the dropper, long since gone. That's if they're even able to stay in business. I see a lot of California companies just having to diversify in the meantime, if they're even able to stay afloat after this LA vape ban uh, for all cannabis products. So we'll see. I have to come back to the talking hedge and find out. So with that, we're going to roll this one up. I'm Josh Kincaid. This is the talking hedge. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe or don't. And I'm out.